United States housing price bubble is facing extra pressure as soaring lumber prices are slowing the construction of new housing units, keeping inventory tight and pushing prices even higher. Meanwhile, inflation fears are mounting as the coming $1.9 trillion stimulus package has just passed, which consequently has led mortgage rates to unexpectedly hike over the past few weeks. Record low interest rates were the main booster of the latest housing market rally, but experts say they are expected to trend higher this year. Thus, amid expensive inputs, supply shortages, heightened rates, and skyrocketing home prices, a housing market crash looms as the price bubble grows increasingly more unsustainable with each passing day. That's what we're going to discuss today. So stay with us. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and share this video. And please subscribe to our channel to keep updated with the next chapters of the United States economic collapse. The red-hot U.S. housing market has outperformed pretty much every sector of the economy during the current recession, primarily supported by historically low mortgage rates and an elevated demand. However, rising mortgage rates are about to throw cold water on the market and cool off demand as housing prices continue to soar to unprecedented levels and buyers face further difficulties to find a place to call home. This week, mortgage rates continued their uphill climb, trading higher as the market continues to gauge the economy's path forward. Said Zillow economist Matthew Speakman, adding that, by now, it's well known that mortgage rates are much higher than they were to begin the year as a combination of increased inflation expectations and growing signals that the economy is rebounding have propelled rates upward. According to Freddie Mac chief economist Sam Cater, after mortgage rates hit a low point in January, they have continuously started to climb, having risen more than 30 basis points since then. The impacts on purchase demand have been noticeable. Over the past weeks, a dramatic decline has been registered, and now it's currently on par with last March, prior to the burst of health crisis. Elevated rates have also seriously constrained refinancing activity. Data from the Mortgage Bankers Association show that applications for refinances sharply fell in volume in recent weeks. As explained by Doug Duncan, chief economist at Fannie Mae, who says, in the longer term, continued upward pressures on interest rates will likely dampen home sales and mortgage originations. This means that demand is not only being crushed by the dangerous housing price bubble, but also by the prospects that lenders will keep rising mortgage rates those rates the buyers won't be able to pay. On the other hand, the bubble continues to be expanded as supply remains tight. All across the country, home building has dropped more than expected in January, falling 2.3% on a year-on-year -year basis, while housing starts declined 6% to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.580 million units last month, the Commerce Department said on Thursday. The housing rally is being threatened by the lack of land and expensive inputs, as builders have been alerting that record high lumber prices were adding thousands of dollars to the cost of a new home, causing some builders to abruptly halt projects. Recently, lumber prices have exploded and key housing industry participants have been extremely concerned about what can happen to the market if this matter isn't promptly addressed. That's why 37 organizations are pleading with Congress for immediate attention to tackle this lumber issue, stressing that if nothing is done, that could aggravate both the recession and the housing affordability crisis. The letter sent to U.S. Department of Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo was signed by several groups that are urging for a solution before the situation spirals out of control. 
many of them have been registering mounting problems in many areas of housing, including construction, real estate, and manufacturing. We respectfully request that your office examine the lumber supply chain, identify the causes for high prices and supply constraints, and seek immediate remedies that will increase production, says the letter. The please come as elevated prices for wood threaten to obstruct numerous construction projects across the nation and send prices for new homes to sky highs due to rising costs and, as a result, exacerbate the financial distress faced by new home buyers over the past year. Lumber prices have almost tripled, with boards used in residential construction jumping 250% since last spring, said the letter. Now, lumber is trading at $1,000 per thousand board feet, and that's an all-time high. This extraordinary hike has lifted the national average price of a new single-family home in the U.S. by more than $24,000 since April 2020. Now, that's according to the National Association of Home Builders. Prices for wood are still expected to record further gains this year, as forest economic advisors experts pointed out that home building and renovations will cause demand to outstrip production, and production is going to have a hard time keeping up with demand growth, said Paul Yanker, the FEA's principal of lumber. That will keep the average lumber price this year above levels seen in 2020. Consequently, Home builders and construction firms that have signed fixed price contracts are being forced to absorb these staggering increases in materials prices and costly delays and deliveries. And there's a serious risk that many of these firms will be pushed out of business and right into bankruptcy. Costs that can be passed on will then make housing increasingly less affordable, the letter said. While other projects will no longer be economically viable, which undercuts the availability of new housing supply and further jeopardizes affordability. On top of enabling the expansion of the price bubble and increasing the imminence of a dramatic housing crash, the affordability crisis will financially impair the next generations, as homes are the main asset of a large part of the population and if there aren't enough homes to meet the growing demand, the largest generation of the U.S. won't be able to start building equity, which will in turn make them more economically vulnerable than previous generations. The dream of home ownership is out of reach for so many working people, exclaimed Senate Banking Chair Sherrod Brown. Rising home prices and flat wages means that many families may never be able to afford their first home. The truth is that millions of Americans are being left out of the market and therefore in a less secure financial position that does not allow them to start building wealth and forming families as fast as previous generations did. More importantly, the looming housing market crash, the affordability crisis, higher mortgage rates, and widening wealth gaps are all a result of growing inflation. Central banks have fueled the housing price bubble by enacting near zero rates in a time that inventory was lean. In that way, they artificially created a wealth effect that was simply not sustainable. Prices rocketed so ruthlessly that interest rates were forced up as market watchers could already see that if the bubble continued to grow, the burst would cause a catastrophic crash in prices and sharply collapse property values, resulting in a financial crisis just as we saw in 2008. Now, the $1.9 trillion stimulus package will send interest rates to pre-outbreak levels of about 3.5%. Now, that's according to the forecast of Redfin chief economist Daryl Fairweather. That is to say, once the economy reopens and more money flows into the economy, if demand doesn't bounce back soon enough, central banks won't be able to sustain the bubble. 
unless they keep pouring enormous amounts of money inside the market. But that won't remove the dangers of a crash. It'll simply slow down the process. In a recent Financial Times analysis, housing specialists argued that quantitative easing programs and money printing inevitably led to higher inflation, and central banks should reconsider their stimulus policies as they're only delaying and deepening the eventual bubble bust. Stimulus is also increasing wealth inequality and worsening housing crises. Higher asset prices increase the net worth, as measured by market prices, of those who already have substantial wealth while leaving the position of those without assets unchanged, the article explains. Moreover, that will make home ownership even more out of the reach of those who don't have any savings or inheritances. And considering inflation shows up in assets but not wages, this crisis is bound to only get worse over time. The Case-Shiller Price Index is signaling that home prices are climbing much faster than wages, and houses have become remarkably more expensive compared to all other goods and services in the economy, as the value of the dollar continues to collapse. Central banks make a convenient scapegoat for politicians who are unwilling to take on vested interests that can create an artificial scarcity of housing. Changing regulation and reforming planning law is a more sensible way to address the deficiencies of the housing market than running a monetary policy that would not be justified by the inflation and unemployment data stressed analysts with the Financial Times. If other fundamentals were improving, the current price appreciation wouldn't be so alarming. But the reality is that our economy continues on a free fall after so many job losses, business closures, and bankruptcies. So the current housing rally isn't justifiable nor sustainable for much longer. According to Drexel University economist Kevin Gillen, if house prices are going up but incomes and population aren't going up, then you're either going to have a crash or the market is going to move to a permanent level of being less affordable. And most analysts are anticipating home prices to continue to increase this year and mortgage rates to continue surging. Even if higher interest rates temper demand a little bit, it could take years before the supply of housing can meet demand. And throughout this process, millions of Americans will remain priced out of the market. The price run-up is going to choke off first-time buyers, said Lawrence Young, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. This simply cannot continue. As prices simply outpace people's income by a large margin, people won't qualify to get a mortgage. All things considered, as we previously have argued in many other housing market videos on Epic Economist, if anything else, inflation will definitely pop the Fed-fueled housing bubble. Although no one can accurately predict when a housing market crash will occur, and, and some may argue that there are too many buyers, multiple offers, and extremely heated conditions, we have to keep in mind that the more assets are inflated and prices get out of touch with our economic reality, the fewer people will be able to afford such exorbitant prices. Let's remember the two things that were boosting the rally. Record low interest rates and an elevated demand. Mortgage rates are already spiking, and if demand drastically drops, that's the end game no central bank will be able to reverse. A price correction is just a matter of time, and we should not ignore the warning signals. <laughs>